with the harem. The harem, 6,000. Or 12,000 in Cairo. A guy have 12,000 harem in Cairo. That's this, this, this is a little bit shocking news here. Well, Brother Joseph, let's continue. We're going to continue with the historical perspective, and we hear this one very important uh, piece I may be sure with you a little bit early. Listen carefully what it says. Islam's black slaves also reveals that the castration of male slaves was commonplace in Muslim households. The Khalifa in Baghdad had 7,000 black and 4,000 white eunuchs in his palace. So he has them as eunuchs. Notice not just black, but white. Oh, it doesn't know. Color was not an issue. As we see in North Africa when, when uh, Thomas Jefferson went to war, I mean, African were taking our people, the white, uh, 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 when they were attacking the ships. And the Turks, the Ottoman Turks, took the Slavs in Eastern Europe, in Europe, and I don't have it in front of me. I don't have absolute proof. We could look it up. But I yes. understand the etymology mm -hmm. of the English word slave comes from the word Slav. That's true. From the Ottoman Turks. I've studied this myself. I know yeah. this to be a Taking fact. the white Slavs mm -hmm. to be their slave. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's actually the beginning yeah. of slavery. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Let's continue a little bit more. Islamic teachers throughout the centuries have consistently defended slavery, for there must be masters and slaves. That is the, the, the scholar, the, the, the Muslim scholar are teaching. There will always be masters, there will always be slaves. Yeah. Allah said it in the Quran, Muhammad said it in the Hadith, it's over. You don't even want to argue with it, yeah. you don't have to fight it. Yeah. It, it, is, it is Islam ideology, it is a belief, it's a way of life, mm. get over it. Mm. We have one caller, I believe Mary, uh, who would like to talk to us. Sure. And uh, we would like to welcome you on the air, Mary. Welcome you on the air with Jesus or Muhammad. Okay, is Mary with us? No, okay, no callers. Maybe she Go. can call us back. If, yeah, you're if, welcome if. to call back. And listen, callers, any of you are welcome to call. Christian, Muslim, uh, whatever you are, you're welcome to call. But we have, okay, we, we do have another caller. Okay, we have a lot of information to cover. And so whoever calls, Christian, Muslim, or otherwise, we need you to be on topic tonight. If Please. you're not on yes. topic, we, we just can't give you time. We already gave a Muslim 10 minutes of our time of a completely off-topic, foolish question. We can't afford to do that again. Let's take the next caller right now. Welcome, you're on the air with Jesus or Muhammad. Uh, peace of Christ to you, uh, Brother uh, Joseph and Brother Osama. And to Hello, you, Christian Brother Prince. Chris. Uh, sorry, Brother Osama, I did not receive your uh, your uh, message earlier, so I apologize. That's okay, uh, The brother. topic about slavery mm. is extremely important, but you know what? I would like Osama to read for us. I don't know if he has his uh, his own Quran translation, because many, maybe most of people who are watching the TV do not know that you have a book. You yes. translated the Quran. Mm. So uh, I don't know if you have the, your own translation there uh, for chapter 30, verse number 28. In that I chapter, had it. 70, 20, I have your 30, Quran. 28. Here's your Quran, Habib. You oh, know. thank you so 30, much. 28. Yeah. All right. Hey. I got it, Brother CB. <laughs> Go for it. Okay. And here, you know, in this verse, 30, uh, I'll give you time to find it so you can read it for us. In this verse, Allah is telling the Muslims, like, are you going, like, do you, you, yourself, do you consider yourself equal to your slaves? Are you going to share with them your glory and your property and your, you know, uh, 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 what you own? Mm -hmm. Simply, no, you will not do that. You know? <laughs> so this is supposedly a, a parable from Allah mm. to the Muslims, showing them that this is how he do not consider the, the, the one, you know, uh, uh, who is he, Allah, to the mm. slave. They are the slave, you know. So Allah is God. They are slaves for him. You know, it's a chain of slavery. Like, I'm your master. Mm -hmm. as a Muslim. And you, as a Muslim, you, have, you are a master for somebody else. So mm -hmm. he's speaking to them saying, are you considering yourself the same as the slave you own? You know, I, I will let Brother Osama to read it, and then we will continue, if you don't mind. For okay. 30, 30 verse 20. If okay. you read it in my translation, Third. it's a little bit better than others. Okay, this verse. is for our, our viewers. The reference is 3028. And we're reading from, now what do you call your translation? The generous Quran. It's just the, a name. Okay, Quran, Quran al-Karim. Al we're reading from the Quran al-Karim translation. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's Surah 30, verse 28. Yes. He sets forth a parable to you from among yourselves. Mm. Do you have from what your right hand possessed? That's the word slave. Yeah. Okay. Of partners in what we provided you, so you are alike in it. 
you fear them as you fear yourselves. Likewise, we expound on the verses to an understanding people. That's 28. Yes. Now, can we have some exegesis from the both of you? Because <laughs> in English, I'm looking at it in Yusuf Ali and others, CP, and in, even in Osama's, and in English, this is very obscure. Well, always in English, they try to make it look different, you know, yeah. translate. But some Methodists have shown it clearly that yeah. even Allah, when He is giving an example to the Muslims, He is showing them that you will not let the slave to be equal to you. And this is mean that Allah, He, you know, accept that. Mm -hmm. You know, accepting you taking a slave, accepting him to be nothing. And you know what? In Islam, we can go over the rules of Islam because now, until now, like I, I'm watching the program, we did not cover other issues in slavery. Like slavery in Islam, what does slavery mean exactly? Is it only a person who works for me? Slavery in Islam is a lot more than this. Number one, a slave in Islam, he is not allowed to own anything. You know, there is a... There is a, a it, it's, it's coming up, by the way, Brother CB. We're going to be talking a little bit more here in the presentation. But it's a very okay, wonderful point. Yeah. Then I will, I will not talk about it much then. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I got, uh, CP, I got a, a translation here that might help us a little bit for our English viewers. Uh, it's the uh, Rodwell translation. Mm -hmm. He setteth forth to you an instance drawn from yourselves. Have ye among the slaves whom your right hands uh, have won, any partner in what we have bestowed on you so that ye share alike? Fear ye them as ye fear each other? We don't. No. They don't. No. It, it, no. It, it, it's written, and when I translate this verse, it is one of the verses, if you translate it literally, you lose it. It's actually, you want to change right it around. Right hand possess slave. Yeah, right hand slave is It's what yes. you own. Yes. Yeah. And you don't fear them like you fear, you fear yourself. No. And you don't share with them like you share, like you have among your own free children, obviously. I always yeah. think like that. Yeah. Well, CP, thank you for bringing this up. Uh, we appreciate uh, you, brother. I want to add something else. For Go ahead. You know, yeah. one of the rules of the, of the prophet of the stand he created, that uh, as an example, there is two women, they fought with each other. And one of them, she caused the other one to lose uh, 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 her baby. She was pregnant. So what Muhammad did, he ordered the, the, the women who did cause the other woman to lose her baby mm -hmm. to pay her back a slave or a newborn slave. <laughs> I'm just trying to pull up the hadith for you. So you a newborn see. slave. <laughs> I can give you the reference. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, what like a justice. Imagine, you know, yes. Like two women, they are fighting, and a slave is have, the slaves have nothing to do with this. Like yeah. a slave woman, yeah. she is just, you know, uh, uh, she is not aware of what the whole fight. And, you know, uh, here we go. Sahih al Bukhari, book number 83, number 41. It says, reported by Abu Huraira, two women from the tribe of uh, Hazir. Yeah. Both one of them threw a stone to the other women, mm. causing her miscarriage. Yeah. And Allah Apostle gave his judgment that he, the, the killer of the Exodus, should give a newborn, newborn baby male or female slave as a payback ransom. You it know? must be justice, so now, CP. It must be justice. Allah, Allah know how to do justice with his prophet Muhammad. Mm. Yeah, you see, like, you know, the two women are fighting, and uh, like even here, uh, like, uh, I want to also the other the, the, the brother of the African American. Imagine I am fighting with Osama, hmm. and I cause uh, God forbid the, his wife to, to, to lose her baby. Hmm. The judge say, you know what? My wife she have not my wife. Sorry, the slave, slave I own, which might be one of your wives, like those uh, 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 poor people, the slaves. Mm. She have to give her babies. Like in here, where is the mercy that a mother who have a newborn ba born baby oh. is going to give his own, her own son to a stranger for no fault, for no crime she did? Well, CP and, you know and Osama... Even, this... even if the mother, she is, she is the one who did that, this is not right. This is a perfect uh, valuation, uh, an example of the valuation of human life yes. in Islam. Human life has a definite price, price for slaves, price for women, price for men, in the sense that 
Hey, this is property. What your right hand possesses, it's it is, property. It and is, exactly. Thank you, CP, for, for sharing that. We only have 30 minutes left in the program. I know Brother Osama wants to move forward, but you're a blessing thank to you. us, CP. Thank you for calling. God bless you. Do you want to continue on? Absolutely. You've got a lot more slides. Uh, I know. We will, we'll get into by God's will. Yeah. Uh, listen to uh, Ibn Khaldun. Yes. I, I shared with you uh, earlier, we're going to talk about in, Ibn Khaldun. In the Muqaddimah, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in his histor his historical great work, one of the most respected yeah. historical. Who, who, do you, who do we have in America like this to get American people to understand his status, his position? Who is a, a, a great singer in America? A who great you, singer? Yeah, somebody a, a great. Uh, well, Michael Jackson is dead. You know, <laughs> uh, not singer, thinker. Thinker. Yeah, thinker. Somebody have power in the in the West. Yeah. Uh, to to compare to Ibn Khaldun. Oh, um, oh, oh, okay. I want to just okay. give the American uh, people an idea. That yeah. What is this man's position in the Muslim world? Yeah, well, you know, somebody like, uh, let's see, well, of course, in the old days, Daniel Webster, John Locke. Uh, okay, so you, you got some idea. Like that, so, the, yeah. so the Western Hunzi here, what mm -hmm. Ibn Khaldun is saying here, compares this to some great thinker, yeah. somebody in the West who have uh, done great influence on the Western. Yeah, John, Jonathan Edwards. Jonathan Edwards. The, the greatest American theologian, okay, theologian. ever. Now yeah. let's go to what Ibn Khaldun said yeah. concerning slave. The yeah. preeminent Islamic medieval historian and social thinker Ibn Khaldun wrote, the Negro nations are submissive to slavery because they are quite similar to dumb animals. Mm. How do you like that? I want to see some black Muslim mm or some uh, Middle East Muslim yeah. to come and tell me, how dare Ibn Khaldun to, to, to consider or to talk about black slave and, 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 and describe him to be some dumb animals? But this is a good representation of Arab thought concerning black people historically. It's history. Yeah, it's history. I cannot change the statement. It cannot be removed. That's not a verse in the Quran you can delete or abrogate. And this is a Muslim scholar and historian. Great, well respected. Great, well respected yeah, thinker. Yeah, when you talk yeah. about Ibn Khaldun, it's like Allah Muhammad Ibn Khaldun. Do you have the verse? Do you have what he said about the, the black person being burnt, overcooked? No, I don't you, have I, this I'll one. get you that one. Dear, dear, in the Mukadima, mm. uh, I'll have to look it up while, later on, maybe need, tomorrow night. I'd like in, to see in, in the Mukadima work by Ibn Khaldun, he describes the black African, the white European, and the Arab. Yeah. And of course, the Arab is the pinnacle of, of the world. Oh, that's the you best see? of Allah creature. Because, Allah's creature. because he, he describes the womb as an oven, right? Yeah. And, and, and if it comes out white, well, it's not cooked enough. Yes. It's undone, you know? Mm. If it comes out black, cook obviously it's burnt. Yeah, cooked too much. But, but if it comes out golden brown, it's perfect, and that's where the Arabs come into man, play. Man. Praise Allah. Yeah, well, <laughs> this is in his work. Go, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Talk Even about as racism. Late as the 19th century, it was noted that in Mecca, there are only a few families that do not keep slaves. They all keep slave mistresses in common with their lawful wives. That is the status of what's happening in Saudi Arabia, in Mecca, in the 19th century. Everybody mm. have a slave. Mm. And it's very normal. You have mm. wives and you have what your right hand possesses. They are fulfilling the word of Allah as it is written in the Quran. They're, do they're good Muslims. Mm. Mm. Okay, let's continue. I really would like to finish this part if we can. It would be awesome. Here we go. And by the way, in the West, very few people had slaves in America. Well, Very, only rich people in America had slaves. The people Plantation who have a lot of farm, a lot yeah. of land. Yeah. Okay. The legends of European slave raiders venturing into the jungles of Africa to capture free people are generally just that, myths. Here was the teaching in, the, in America. Yeah. The white guys go in Africa, you with know, guns uh, and, with yeah, guns, yeah. and they start shooting, he captures them, and hang them, and pull them, and never, put them in the bag, and take them to the ship, and bring them all the way to America. Never happened. This is a fact. The fact is... The slaves were usually sold by their black owners. There was no need for the slave raiders to venture into the jungles of Africa. They simply purchased the people from African chiefs and Muslim slave traders at the coast. They were all brought all the way out. No white folks went inside the jungle to get themselves shot or killed to get a slave. The chief, the chief, the, the black chief, brought his own people to the traders, which just happened to be Muslim, mm. those who sold them to the European. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's sad, it's, it's history, it's fact, and I'd like to 
uh, say that in uh, as we're going to see in the next slide here the disgraceful fact is that there were three equally guilty partners in the horrible crime of the transatlantic slave trade 